Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Joel Blow the trumpet in Zion Sound the alarm on my holy mountain Let the inhabitants of the land tremble For the day of the Lord is coming It is near A day of darkness and gloom A day of clouds and thick darkness Like blackness spread upon the mountains A great and powerful army comes their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Let even now, saith the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relentance from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a Solomon assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the ages. Gather the children even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no ob obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beating, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated and in imp as imp impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making much many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received a reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismayed like the hypocrites, so they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moss nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On this day, Ash Wednesday, we are invited to observe a Holy Lent. Observing a Holy Lent means we spend time intentionally looking at our lives the way we, in which we are broken and need healing, the places we have lost sight of God or are in need of turning in a new direction, the places we are angry, hurt, and need to find reconciliation and peace. Today is known as the Day of Ashes because on this day, the faithful have their foreheads marked with ashes, usually in the shape of a cross. The use of ashes is first found in the Old Testament in the Hebrew Scriptures, where they were used for two purposes, as a sign of humility and mortality, and as a sign of sorrow and repentance for sin. The Christian imposition of, in the Liturgy of Ash Wednesday was taken from this Old Testament custom. The concept originated as the Day of Ashes sometime in the 6th century, we think though the exact origin of the day is not clear. The custom for marking the head of ashes on this day may have originated under the papacy of Gregory the Great, so somewhere around 590 to 604, perhaps. Receiving ashes on the forehead is intended to remind us where we have come from. We are mere mortal beings, creatures of the earth. The ashes remind us that we are all the same made of the dust that form the earth and the stars, we are some say stardust, which have been given life by the God who loves us. It is symbolic that marking our forehead with the sign of the cross and ashes follows the same pattern of the cross marked on our heads at baptism with the chrism oil when we are marked as Christ's own forever. The sign of the cross comes from a Hebrew word ta, which was a, a mark in the shape of an X and was placed on the foreheads of religious inhabitants of Jerusalem. It also comes from the Greek letter chi, which looks also like an X, but is pronounced differently. Of course, it's chi, not C. It's the H-I is the way the letter sort of looks, but it's pronounced chi. 
and chi is the first letter of the Greek word for Christ. The early church fathers made this ta, chi, cross, Christos connection and expanded upon it. This led in part to the practice of making the sign of the cross on people's foreheads and other places where we have the sign of the cross. In fact, you can see the chi, well, it's here on various parts of the church building where you can see the chi uh, insignia. Ash Wednesday, with the gritty mark of ashes, points us to look at how we are living our lives. These dry, dark, burnt remains from the Palms of Palm Sunday remind us that life is a journey from being a newborn baby crying out its first breath to our often shriveled last breath. And in between, we are God's people living in God's world. And the ashes remind us that we are all just earth. Each of us are one and the same made of the earth. And in being earth, which is a literal translation of Adam, Adam, the first human being that was named in Genesis, and in being created by God out of the dust of the earth, we are also called to be in relationship with God. God who breathed life into us, God who loves us, weeps with us, celebrates with us. In baptism, we are marked as Christ's own with holy oil. On Ash Wednesday, we are marked again with ashes and called to look at our lives, especially during the season of Lent, and examine how we are broken, what relationships need repair, and how we can deepen our relationship with God, with one another, and even with ourselves. The dust of Ash Wednesday begins this journey, and so I invite you to observe a holy Lent. May your travels in this season of Lent bring you into new life. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the Church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past and faithfulness, the bride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, 
and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may return from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us, Lord Christ, with your grace. Let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. أبانا in heaven, hallowed be 
your holy name, your kingdom come, your will be done, in all the earth as in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done, in all the earth as in heaven, and give to us, give us this day, our daily bread, O Lord, we pray, forgive our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us, and save us in time of trial, deliver us from evil, yours is the kingdom, yours the power, your is the glory, now and ever, Abana, in heaven, Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and the poor. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with the joy. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with the joy. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with the joy. Thanks be to God.